What is good? Oh, we're back. We're ready to roll, ready to roll, ready to roll. <laughs> per usual. We got our guy Austin here. How you doing, bud? Good, man. What's going on, fellas? How's it going? Good, good, good. Uh, before we get rolling, where, where, give us the Twitter handle and, and where we can find you. At Austin Abbott FF. Make sure you go follow along on the Twitters and multiple other platforms of his choice. Um, two B's, two T's, two F's. That's right. Yes, sir. Uh, but we're going to kick tonight off with a little buy, sell, hold. Uh, we got a little Puka, a little DeAndre Swift, a little Nico Collins, uh, all for your pleasure. Let's kick it off with, with Puka because it feels like there's impending doom coming for Puka Nakua as the autumn leaves turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, everybody's like, well, let's see what happens when Cup comes back. What kind of role is he going to have? The Robert Woods role. So I guess it's buy, sell, hold, Puka Nakua. What are, what are your thoughts here? I mean, we got wide receiver four on the season, fourth in points per game. Legal. Leading the league in targets and receptions. Right. Second in yards. Finally got his first touchdown. My favorite stat, tied for third in yak. Where's right. That? So, you know. Cup's supposed to be resuming practice week five. Supposed to be. Supposed quotes. to be. Those are quotes. The hope is that he can play week five. What's He's your, coming. What's your general sentiment on what you're doing with, with Puka right now, Austin? So I kind of have a gut feeling that I sold too early, man. I'm just going to come out and say it. I think I got burned. I sold him for a 2026 first. I know it's so far down the road. I could not get a 24, could not get a 25. One GM hit me up. It was like, I'll, I'll do it right now, but it's going to be down the road. And uh, I, I'm just going to say, like, I think I'm going to take an L. Um, maybe, you know, maybe when Cup comes back, maybe Puka's just not quite what he currently is. That wouldn't surprise me, but, dude, Puka looks so legit, man. He looks so legit. Um, I always tell myself, like, I'll never be mad at myself if I sell high, right? You can't be mad about that. Sure, but profit, sure. Right, but at the same time, it does feel like, feels like his value is just going to keep going up, man. He he feels like he's here to stay, and I've watched the tape. It, it does not look like it's an accident, man. It looks like he, when he steps on the field, when he, he's commanding those targets, Puka looks legit. Yeah, he's exactly where he needs to be when he needs to be there. He's got pretty short hands. He does have three drops, but so many targets, he's tied for 30th and drop rate, so that's that's good. And he's a gamer. They come. He, he basically won him that game. He got him down the field and punched it in. Like, he's got the trust of Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford is cooking. It's his kitchen. Little and, little hip injury maybe right now, but mm. looked a little gimpy at the end of the game. It didn't look like a hip, looked like an ankle, but they're saying a hip today, so we shall see. But like you said, Things Stafford's could get cook- easier when Stafford's Cup comes cooking. Back. Cup could not be right. Cup well, is also 30-something years old, 30 years old. I think that's part of what you have to take into consideration. Puka's 22. He's been banged up through his career a little bit. Now, he's been banged up a little bit even In the through NFL. the beginning of this. Oblique. But he's played pretty much every game. Mm-hmm. And you have Cooper Cup, who's you know banged up all through last year. Banged up in the offseason. Hasn't even played yet. He, he's a little older with the soft tissue stuff. How long does this last for? Is it linger through the season here? They, did he take enough time off like what Joe Burrow should have done? Or is it still going to come back and, you know, half game in, couple snaps in, all of a sudden it's tight again. And now what do we do? Maybe maybe you don't see cup for a lot of the season. I'm just I don't think I'm ready to play that that game of like, oh, well, you know, cups coming in and there's no chance that Puka's he's going to take Puka's all Puka's uh, targets and, and everything Puka's doing. And it's like. I understand that if Cooper Cup comes in and healthy, like there's no way he's not going to command a certain threshold of this offense. And yes, you're probably going to get a little Puka decline, but let's not pretend that uh, Cooper's been healthy and let's not pretend he's not older. And let's not pretend like there weren't two top wide receivers fantasy wise in this offense in in prior seasons. Like Robert Woods was absolutely crushing. Now, was he wide receiver four? No. Okay. So he might not be wide receiver four. When Cup comes back, or maybe he's gonna maybe, be, maybe still he, maybe he is still the big dick daddy, and and Co- they work Cooper Cup slowly and hope he doesn't get hurt. And he, here's here's kind of how this has been playing out. Puka has been playing sixty nine point three percent out wide and thirty percent in the slot. Mm-hmm. Tutu Atwell has been playing fifty seven percent out wide and forty two in the slot. And Van Jefferson's basically been around a fifty fifty split. 
Um, so they've been moving those guys around a little bit, but Puka and Tutu seem to stay on the field the most with Puka for sure being that that dog uh, out wide. Now, Cooper Cup in 22 played 55% in the slot and 43% out wide. And in 21, he played 66% in the slot, 32% out wide. In 20, he played 61% in the slot and 38% out wide. And in 19, he played 67% in the slot and 32% out wide. Robert Woods, when he was in there in 20, 50% out wide, 49 in the slot, moved him around 19, 65% out wide, 34% in the slot. So they're accustomed to being able to move guys around and a company and to be able to get what they need out of these guys. Like Puka is, is, if Puka was playing all in the slot and, and the other guys are playing out wide, uh, number one, he probably wouldn't be putting up the numbers that he's doing. But, but right now what that tells me is that Cooper cups probably going to come in and go right into the slot. And in two wide receivers, it's probably going to be Puka and and cup. And then in three, it's going to be cup in the slot and probably two, two out wide. And they're going to switch those guys and move them around depending on the matchups they want. Someone will be in motion every play. So, does it worry me? No, I, I don't think it's a deal where all of a sudden Puka's and uh, Cooper's going to come back and it's going to relegate Puka to the sidelines. All, all those percentages really check out to really being in Puka's favor that he's pretty much could stay on the field the exact same amount that he's on. Does he get the same amount of targets? No, maybe not. But I mean, maybe he's not first in the league in targets at 52. Right, but it, that's OK. Like, you know, I yeah. was told that you can't draft a third round wide receiver and yeah. he might be a league winner. So here we are. Uh, yeah, you know, don't forget. People out there telling y'all to not even think about it. Any RB on the 53, you can't take a wide receiver that was drafted outside of the top three rounds of fan- dynasty football. Like you don't want to take draft. a third wide receiver in the, in the third round. Basically you want to go. There's, there's not very many, um, but this is a league winner right now in, in the, in the third round that was drafted and sometimes in the fourth. So that's a silly, a silly notion. Check all the historical data, uh, and also, again, silly notion because I could find them. Yeah. Uh, at least guys that improved in value. And even if Puka had just become a guy who just improved in value and you were able to get a 2026 first out of it, even if it's that, that's a huge win, which yeah. it, it seems like it's going to be more than that, like you said. Oh, yeah. They, you can't get him for a 26 first now. There's no way I would sell you him that. No, that. For, for me, this is a, a firm hold. And and Austin, where, where are you at now if it was, you know, are you if you still had your Pukas, or would you be still buying or or would you still be selling or holding? Cause I don't know that there's much buying going on at this current juncture. So a, f- a few more things. I do feel like ultimately he is a hold more than anything uh, just for context. My team is a complete dumpster fire. I just, it's a full blown rebuild and I just wanted to secure value. I got him back in June for free off waivers. So to turn, you know, 10, $10, for, uh, 10 fab dollars into a first, Right. I'm never going to be mad about that. It's just I do feel like I could have gotten a little bit more had I waited longer. And right now, if I still had him and I was looking to sell to answer your question, man. So it's so funny because it's like maybe maybe a mid 24 first. But isn't that exactly what we want our first round picks to turn into? We hope right. we hope it's like the family guy, uh, you, you know, the mystery box right. episode. Right. It's right. Like you're, right. you're hoping yeah. exactly you get Puka and uh, in reality, yeah. you're probably not going to get Puka with uh, that mid. I mean, maybe if it's a super flex league, if that's all, if we're talking about super flex dynasty and you want to give me a mid 24, I might get entertain it, but I need more than a first. Right. 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 If I held this long four weeks after this, you know, it, like, it, it feels like a mid 24 first and an early 24 second. And then it's like, all right, we, we can talk. Not enough. No, I need, I, I need like two first. To this point. I don't first? even know if I like this is a point, and and I do want to clarify. Like, like we're talking dynasty right now. I, I would like to address redraft for a second, but like in dynasty, I mean, man, I traded a twenty five third to get into the early fourth round of this year's draft to take Puka, and I could flip him for a big profit, or I just like start him every week for you know, and like for when the next. Ten years. I mean, I don't know. What else could you want? You can't have a better start. You can't imagine a better start to a career for almost anyone, like right. much less a fifth round pick. And I, I think, you know, nine times out of ten or seven times out of ten, you do want to flip this player because it does seem like it's maybe not sustainable flash in the pan. And is it quite sustainable where he's at? I, I, I'm not sure. I, I think there's it, regression it, drink. Come sure. And I, but I, I think there's, you know, going to then be progression back to the to that <laughs> to the I, mean right i just i just don't see 
I don't have any. Why, why do we have faith in Cooper Cup at this point? Like uh, that that he's gonna he can maintain health. And I hate to be. I'm never that guy. Yeah. I'm not a. I'm not a big. You know, get off because of health guy. But like we're giving all of a sudden. Cooper Cup the benefit of the doubt that he's going to come back in and be you know super effective and super healthy right away when it's like we really haven't I mean we saw it dominate for a stretch in last year MVP Cal like a right. couple of seasons I mean for a while in the last year he was still the wide receiver one for a minute right um so right. yeah you're probably going to see a little bit of regression but I you know I think in this case I think you're right this is what you wanted this is what I got this is why I like to play dynasty and, and in I'm, three years Puka will be 25 and right. Cooper Cup probably won't be. Cooper well, you'll need now. to deal with a new quarterback, but yeah. So whatever. I mean, I'm 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 most I'm I'm firmly in the hold. I don't think you can buy at this point. Um, I, I don't think I'm selling. I'm I'm just hanging on to this asset. Before before we move on from Puka, I want you guys to just do your best. Give me a stat line for the final final stat line for Puka this season. He has just over 500 yards now. Where do you think he realistically ends by the end of the season? No, I don't know. I mean, anything could happen. I'm not. I'm not big on projections, but I mean, give me something. Come on, like 1,200 yards. Is that too hot? I mean, I think, I think, I think you got to say over 1,200. Yeah, it's almost yeah. halfway there. Isn't that crazy? Is that yeah. crazy? Poku over 1,200 yards. Like if you told me that a month ago, I'd, I'd say like this. 39 catches like, already. Stop. Right. Like that used to be a good season for rookies. 39 catches and 500 <laughs> yards. Like that would be a, like, oh, he's showing some promise. Yeah. <laughs> after after week two, he had more receptions, more targets and yards than Sky Moore, I believe. Uh, that Sky Moore had in 17 games as a rookie. Right. So it's, and he's he's broken all the re- reception records, I believe, yeah, yeah. for rookies at this point. Yeah. Not just, Maybe not touchdown. This but. is what you wanted. And yes, it could go badly. And, and yeah, you don't want to get caught holding the bag. And, I can't and imagine I'm not going to begrudge badly. anybody for for if making an insane profit on this guy. But for the most part, you know, there's there's certain guys that I want to hold and hang out with, and, and he seems to be one. Yep. Um, now, redraft, you know, if again. Moving for a running back, a, a good running back, is so hard out there. That's really I, the only I thing. Wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, man. In, it's, in, it's just so hard with a running back. In redraft, you know? if, you, if you wanted to move him for one of those wily veterans that you know aren't going to be affected really by anything such as the Keenan, Keenan Allens, Allens or the Devonte Adams. And if somebody would give you that for him, which I'm not really sure why they would in redraft at this point. Um, but like, that's really the only move I want to make in redraft. Like, I mean, you're, it's not like you can get anything, but like you can't, you're not getting anything in the future. Right. You know, it's just, I'm not, I'm, and I'm certainly not going to settle for, you know, somebody, you know, I'm not going to sell them for like a Brandon Ayuk, which no shade on Brandon Ayuk, but like, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm holding on to Puka. But like if you could get a Keenan or a Devante or, you know, one of those top elite assets, which, again, I don't know why those guys would. It's not like they're aging out in this redraft. Right. But that's pretty much the only way I, I kind of see that going. Like the, the, the landscape of running backs right now, like Puka right now is probably winning you the league right now or has you at the top. If you can just get some running back points in in redraft and, and in dynasty so you know what do you who are you going to sell for like what running back would you even get in redraft that would you know that you would feel super great about that that somebody like, would even trade you for tony pollard you might be able to get tony you probably you know would you do that i think i'd rather puka i'm not even kidding i i i, I really think puka is legit man i i regret I mean, he definitely I regret is telling you got it for nothing and like these running backs are dropping like flies and I get like in dynasty kind of it's, it's touch and go with when, when to pursue a running back, but in redraft, you got to have them like you're trying to win. This is a sell out. So like I, it could be hard out there if you didn't scoop up a Ford or a Kyron Williams. I mean, or, you could be rolling with you know, Kyron and Ford right now and be crushing your league. Right. Like, but if you don't have those, right. Guys, I mean, right. I mean, if you have CMC as you know, or, you know, you got eight, you got lucky and got a chain, and you know, so it's w- like, would you would you swap a chain? Would you swap Puka for a chain in redraft? I would rather Puka confidently. I think I'm just staying. I feel more confident whole season with yeah, with just Puka. that it's that there can't be the the coach really feeling limiting usage for some reason one week or the other. It just it feels like the size doesn't matter it feels as like much. It, McDaniel's is the gatekeeper of a chain. And I don't think nobody's really gatekeeping Puka at this right. point. You know what I mean? So that, well, if there, there's not a better gatekeeper to have, right? Sure. But uh, we'll talk about a chain. I think on the next video, stay tuned for that. All right. Well, how about, would you, 
would you swap out in Dynasty? Would you trade Puka for JSN right now? Oh, man. Why you got to ask the hard questions? This is tough, <laughs> that, man. That, that, that was all over Twitter, and I saw polls go in both directions. This is tough, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if I regret this. Uh, I, I still want JSN, but if, if I'm wrong, if I look like an idiot, I, I could say, yeah, I saw that coming. I, I still believe in JSN. I liked him that much as a prospect, right? And, and I mean, man, we're, we're a month in. A month doesn't change everything, but it does change a lot. I, I recognize that. I, I would still sure. rather Jason. Case? Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's uh, again, we talk about this all the time, but once you get into the dynasty season, it whether anybody likes to admit it or not, it's played more like redraft. Everybody gets all their values elevated, and it's hard not to. And and like, like we've just talked about for the last 10 minutes, Puka, for me, doesn't seem like it's really – like it, it's pretty solid. It might go down a little bit, but I think it'll come back up at, at some point. JSN, it, it could legitimately be another year before you're getting what you want out of them. And, it, you know, how, how is patience versus kind of right now? Because I am I'm kind of feel what you're saying. Austin, I, I was high on J. Everybody was high on JSN. I mean, yeah, he, so I, I don't think I'm, I'm quite ready to say like the prospect was so good with JSN that I think I would if I could make that swap, I would. But certainly not doing anything for you this year. Like JSN is not playable. Like, yeah, I mean, you you if you you're hope a, that JSN if you're turns a, into Puka, if, if you're a contender and you're hot right now, like yeah, really, like it's that'd be it. like if, if, JSN if somebody be offered Puka? you that, if somebody offered you that, you'd be if JSN was Puka, he'd be the wide receiver one in Dynasty right now. You know, yeah. it'd be the hype would be that crazy. Yeah, um, isn't that enough? It's such a good point, man. He JSN would be worth three first, like or more, and the fact that. Uh, you know, a fifth round pick is doing because he got poor draft cap. He uh, Puka is barely worth one first like a week ago, right? It, it's it's crazy that it, and I believe it's solely based off of the prospect itself, right? Would yeah. you guys agree sure. with that? And, right. and, and some Cooper Cup, but like I, I feel like the same people that are like, well, look at Cooper Cup, never liked Cooper Cup in the fucking first place either. So maybe you guys could all just chime out, like chime out, <laughs> yeah, because you don't get to say anything about Cooper or Puka. Okay, you guys are out on him, missed them both. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's, you know, that's, that's why it's a tough decision. I want to, I want to say because I'm practicing patience and, <laughs> and that J that I want that I would for sure say JSN, but it'd be really hard to turn Puka right down right now. If you had like um, a hot team that was, that was ready yeah. to push and you're just hoping that JSN turns into Puka and the Puka thing keeps going. So um, I, I I'll say JSN, but I mean, I'm keeping Puka. Puka. You, you put the cards on the table. Uh, shit. <laughs> I have to... I have Puka. If someone sent me JSN, I, I don't. I think I just let it sit there until they took it down because I, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't yeah. be able to hit accept or deny. I if you're think. in your if you're in your situation where you said you got a dog shit rebuild or whatever, uh, you know, I, fine. If you want to swap that out, get for these JSN, Puka points out of your lineup. Get the Puka points <laughs> out of your lineup and get the JSN, whose value is going to stay strong regardless. Uh, you know, it's not might not elevate but it's you know it might go down a little but it's not gonna the bottom's not gonna fall out of it um so you know it's 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 the old you know competing versus non-competing jsn has two receptions for two yards at halftime we're recording right now during the game and like you know he's just proven our point even more right right he's and and one of those catches if he'd have made the guy miss it would have been a big gain but he got shoestring tackled and it was just like come on man he's shiny at the bottom of the bench right now and that's shiny that's basically it yeah (laughs) Uh, so yeah, that's interesting. Interesting. All right, let's move along. Let's keep it moving. Let's go. Uh, let's go. DeAndre Swift next. So we've talked a little DeAndre, um, in the past, maybe week two after he broke out. Oh, we're just playing the right. We're playing the hits right now. Yeah. So DeAndre, your pleasure. DeAndre, you're welcome. RB five weeks two through four. Yeah, because he didn't play week one. Well, he did. He got one carry. So like, let's factor that. I just want to see what it was. Right. Which he's he's uh had he's RB eight overall, but RB five weeks two through four, uh, ha- mysteriously getting one attempt in week one. Like, the, guess what? The coaches get it wrong sometimes. Right. Uh, but yeah, twenty seven, fourteen, and seventeen points per game, or fantasy points respectively. And then and and if you look at the uh, snap percentages, like they're starting to kind of turn in his favor, which is kind of always the eagle conundrum. Like you didn't know who was going to get the work. Um, but he, he's basically had almost twice as many snaps as Gainwell. Uh, the only place where Gainwell really had the edge was in the two-minute drill. Uh, he took eight out of the ten snaps in the two-minute drill, but it was just 
yeah. just the two of them getting most of the staps. And and Swift is just crushing it right now. Swift Swift looks great. Gamewell got the touchdown. I don't think Swift did. He did have a touchdown. Yeah. Okay. Well, 14 Ga- carries for 56 Believe yards. Believe Gamewell touchdown. got one of the touchdowns. Gamewell's also coming back from a rib. So I could see them leaning, and, they, and I believe they put Gamewell in. They kind of split it like they did the lat, the past week, and then at some point as, in the third quarter-ish, it kind of went back to a pretty heavy swift flow. Um, <laughs> you know, So they were on pace to kind of jockey around for position, and then it went, it went heavy swift. I mean, he's just been better uh, than Gainwell. It's a tricky situation because we know – we don't really trust the rotation of the Philadelphia Eagles right now, but you know, it seems like they're okay with leaning on swift and does the rib injuries, le- you know, lean into that at all with Gainwell? that takes a little while to come back from Boston. Scott was active in this game, but really didn't play at all, which is nice to see. Yeah. There's um, only two running backs on the pie chart. Gives you a little more snaps. confident, but I believe he was injured a few weeks ago. So that's interesting. And Penny was inactive. So I feel like swift's a bit of a conundrum because you know, I, we talked in the off season. He, he was somebody that maybe that you, you might be kind of avoiding because of the way this rotation went. And, and we didn't know kind of how it was going. Like, I didn't really like the startup ADP, but I like being in an existing league to try to acquire Swift because the talent's always been there. Um, it's just how they use him and how the Eagles are going to use him. And, and, and health you know, dynasty wise, he's only on a one year contract and he's still young and he's showing you what he can do. Does he stick around with the Eagles? We don't know. So, you know, it's, do you get out now while the, the getting's good and you can maybe recoup some of your swift that and some of the value you could have got for him a year or two ago, or do you stay in and say, Hey, this is the guy that I wanted. This is the guy I knew, which is, you know, kind of the push and pull of dynasty and then redraft wise. I mean, also like if, if you could upgrade your running back position to somebody you feel a little bit more comfortable with and redraft, is that, is that something you would do? Yeah, I'll I'll kick it to Austin here, but in redraft, like that's the only reason I would sell him is to upgrade a running back spot. Like if I can add somebody else and get a stud stud or something, you know, if I can or maybe just hedge my bet and get someone a little evenly properly rated, then I might be willing to get out of a potential injury risk and Eagles kind of just Usage. making it difficult for me regardless. But if, other than that, I mean, a running back that you didn't pay that much for that's that's averaging, you know, that's that's when been RB five for the last three weeks. Like, what do you think, Austin? So there, uh, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, DeAndre Swift is, is he's still a sell to me. He's much, much more of a sell than a buy. I would much rather get a 2024 first round pick than pay a 2024 first round pick for Swift. Um, there's a few things to keep in mind, like his contract, he's making, uh, what is it? $1.6 million this year. He's on the final, uh, fourth and final year of his contract. He could potentially be on a third team, a new contract next season. We don't know where he's going to be. We don't know how the situation is going to be. We've, we've, he's just unfortunately never had, um, knock on wood, he's never had good health. Like we, we haven't, we, we always question his durability, for, but we have, you know, a valid reason to do so. Um, with, with everything that I just mentioned, there's just so much risk involved. Why not hit the re roll button? Why not just roll the dice again? Go land Braylon Allen. Go get a Henderson. <laughs> just, just like, you know, it makes sense, man. I, I, he could potentially, the fact that he's on a third team already, uh, p- potentially, I'm I saying, in, 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 in five years, that yeah. that in itself is is a very, very bad sign. Um, and well, I, what I, if he resigns with the Eagles? There's a, there's a good chance, man. Like, well, I, don't, I, so I don't know if that's good or bad either. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I don't know the, if there's some stat about third, third team in five years. Yeah. It can't be good. I don't know. That, I don't know. No, no. Uh, no. I, I'm just mentioning the fact that, you know, clearly if a team doesn't want that player to stay with them, it, you know, if they're parting ways, clearly something was wrong. And the fact that that could potentially happen three times in five years, like, you know, that just says something in itself. Right. Um, it felt like Detroit drafted him and they finally landed that running back that they were just infatuated with just the running back that they wanted. And, um, you know, it almost feels like Swift's con Swift's entire career has just been disappointing. Is that fair to say? Well, from, I guess from a holistic view, probably, but when you watch him play and see what he looks like and when he actually is healthy and gets the ball, it's basically what he's been doing in Philadelphia. He's just been, yeah. getting a lot of it all at once, you know, and uh, it's been exploding and that's a really good offense. And so oh, that's like, fine. I think, you know, we were talking redraft there. If, if you wanted to upgrade, that's fine. In dynasty, I think he's a perfect sell candidate, especially if you're any type of rebuild team or you're not like in it right now. 
I have uh, Swift in one of my dynasty leagues that I thought was going to be a rebuild this year, and all of a sudden, I don't know exactly who I should start because I got players blowing up on the bench and in my lineup. I think I'm like first in points, and I got a decent record, and I'm ready to go. And he's on my team. He's my RB2. I got him. I, I drafted Bijan because I won the 1-1 overall uh, in, in the toilet bowl, and then also have Kamara that just came back from suspension. So I'm like – and I got a slew of wide receivers, so I'm probably going to hold Swift in that league. I thought I was going to be rebuilding, but I'm I got Puka, <laughs> and we're ready to roll. Like we're we're ready to roll. <laughs> so I'm probably I should probably sell Swift. I should probably get out, but then I'm down a, a really good running back, you know. And I need that. I need a good running back to win. I need a good running back on a high powered offense, getting some touches, efficient, can catch PPR floor, and a ridiculous ceiling. Man, I'm probably going to hold him in this league. I want to win. I'm trying to what, win. What's the most you would pay in Dynasty to acquire Swift? I don't know if I go buy Swift. Pick. Right now is not the time to buy Swift. Right. I agree yeah, with you. It seems like somewhere around the first would, would around be the price tag. I don't know that yeah. I'm necessarily willing to pay that. Um, if I could get out of the first range and be in some a couple of twos, maybe I would be interested. Um but I, you know, I don't mind selling for a first if you can. Um, I do like the player. I, I, he's looked great. Um, there's a decent chance that that the Eagles would re-sign him if the contract is reasonable potentially. Um, but you know, I think this is a pleasant surprise that he's been. Mm-hmm. The utilization has been as good as it's Especially been. Especially after a one carry week one. Right. Um, Crazy. You know that went from you know if you were off that went from an I told you so to like damn this is he looks good. Um, and he's, he's in a good situation. And if they keep rolling with him, then, you know, the first looks like it could be worth it all day long, uh, you know, but. I, you're you taking know. some risk out. I think if you can go get a first and right. you're not like me, I mean. But you're right. I mean, the, dyna- the, 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 the dynasty landscape right now is tough um, for running backs to, to be in your lineup. Um, and selling and one and still trying to compete. Right. Um, so redraft wise. uh if you could, if you could swap him out for, I don't know, uh, would you, would you swap him out for James Cook in a redraft league? Uh, man, I got to be honest. I would rather DeAndre Swift. Yeah, I think I'm sticking I, Swift. I, would. I, I like Swift so much more in redraft than I do in Dynasty. Let, like, let that be clear. What EETN? If you could make that move, yeah, I'd do I, that. I would rather Travis ETN. Yeah. All right. Uh, how about James Connor redraft? Oh. Give me, give me, give me okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go one more. We'll go Brian Robinson Jr. redraft. Oh, this is a good one. That's I think this boy. is the best question yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, had him on 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 his list for breakouts, and um, it's happening. Uh, let me get back to you in an hour. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I think I think I, I might I might swap for Brian Robinson and redraft. I think I would rather be dynasty. Really, I think. I, yeah, That's, yeah, I agree. In dynasty, I feel more confident, but redraft, I think it's even closer. I think I still lean B Rob, but that is that. That's the best question of the night so far. <laughs> right, how sick. about how about Kyron or Swift rest of the season, dude? Kyron, Kyron, Kyron. yeah, Kyron yeah. is a PPR machine, man. All right, just the usage. Redraft, is, the usage Kyron. Is, yeah, re, the usage is so good. I, I, I guess I would agree that the usage feels like it's not going to quit unless an injury happens and we can't predict injuries. And and I would want more than Swift if I'm trading Kyron in in Dynasty too. Like we got we got a, a, a you solid want more wide... than Swift than for yeah. Ky, for going from Kyron to Swift in Dynasty. Yeah. Oh. I mean that'd be nice if you if you could get a little cherry on top of that that'd be nice i think that would be a, uh, i'd be okay with will that taking that swap it just seems like long term yeah uh maybe would. we traded kyron last week for godwin in it too and i felt like we had, we really did great on that trade right. i love that and now now we probably could get a little more <laughs> all right let's keep it moving here let's get our last uh buy sell oh hold yeah and uh, we're going to go. We, I think we've hit him on a buy, sell, hold, or another topic this, but we had to bring him back this week. And his whole career, we've been hitting this guy. Yeah. Just crushing him. I feel vindicated. Uh, we got Nico Collins here. Yeah. Is Admiral Levine? No, that- no, that's fucking, I think it's the fucking dashboard, right? Oh, uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's from the Spider-Man. <laughs> vindicated. Yeah, he, if Foreman was here, he'd set us he'd straight. Set us straight. 
Uh, Nico Collins, wide receiver seven, 18th highest overall in tight end premium 1.5. Um, he's got the fourth best, fourth best wide receiver grade uh, per PFF. Yeah. Yeah. First in yak with 197 yards. First in yak per reception, 9.0. That last touchdown that he scored in that Pittsburgh game was fantastic. Yeah. The nine yak. <laughs> I'm trying to say yak. That's close, though. Sure. <laughs> uh, nine yards after the catch per reception. That's a sick stat. That's first. Right. I don't know if you said that. I did say that. Okay, I want to say it again. 32 <laughs> targets. That's tied for 16. 22 receptions tied for 16. 428 yards. That's fifth. 19.5 yards per catch. That's third. Uh, three TDs tied for second with nine players there. A lot of, lot of really good stuff going on with Nico. It seems like it's been a battle between him and Tank each week. Uh, at least since Tank's been in the lineup. I don't know if both of them have really crushed, crushed. When one explodes, the other one seems to maybe taper down a little Nico's bit. Nico's had one down week. Uh, yeah, uh, but Nico's been great. So what what are we doing with, let's, I think in 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 redraft, is there is there a move you would make with, with Nico? Is there a receiver that you would swap or you just roll him with found gold there? I don't think you're going to get the respect. I don't think Nico's getting the respect that he deserves, man. Um, I don't think, the the 38, market, though, 38 points will do it this week i i don't think that the market is there still and uh i i think you absolutely have to hold him right or i, I would even be okay with buying if the if the price was right but i think he's more of a hold than anything i mean where are you going to get that type of production you just can't you know it's it, it's it's almost unmatched um, and I know Nico Collins listens to every single episode so i would like to say hey Nico uh, i want to apologize because i was very low on you before the year started and uh he's made me look like an idiot because he is crushing it man i saw 80 plus receiving yards in three out of four games 146 receiving yards in half of his games this year nine plus targets in three of four games and like i know we're only four games into the season nico collins 136 targets is his projection right now 94 receptions over <laughs> this is stupid more yards than justin jefferson last year i get it not sustainable not gonna happen and 13 touchdowns like nico is just playing out of his mind so is cj stroud the texans are fun man they're they're exciting yeah. they're exciting would you would you roll if you redraft would you swap nico for dk mm -mm. yeah nico a little more stability feeling like week after week with Seahawks know, offense. Fucking Drew Locks in there right now. Well, and they got Lockett and JSN and two running well, backs. JSN is we've already talked about that. Pretty yeah, irrelevant at this yeah, point. Um, I guess I, it's just the kind of the same thing. Same thing in the Swift vein. Are you you feeling like you you know Texans are hot right now? Dynasty wise, I feel fine about it. Redraft wise, I guess my thoughts were just finding a guy that maybe you might feel a little bit more comfortable with rest of season that maybe not putting out quite the same output, but you feel better long-term safer through the season here? Or are you just saying, Hey, we're riding the lightning. It's redraft. This is what, you know, this is what this is. Yeah. Let me get something a little better. Nikki, I think. Yeah, I think I I'm with you. I think I'd ride the hot hand, man. Nico's just on fire and you know, redraft is such a short season. Like just stick how with him. A, how about Amari Cooper or Nico and redraft? <sighs> I think that's a better question. Um, God, Amari feels like he's just rejuvenated. You know, he just, he seems like he's taken his career to new heights. I think I'd rather Amari Cooper. I think, I think I would just go, um, obviously Amari was a little banged up and now you missed Deshaun. So we'll see how long, what the Deshaun thing is. So that makes you a little uncomfortable, but it, it feels like week in week out that you're more, that I would be more comfortable with Amari Cooper in one season deal. But like I said, I mean, it's redraft, like riding the lightning is, is, you know, what's, Going to get it done. Nine, anytime I've won, that's typically been what it is. You know, you, Dude, you smash could be just on a crushing off of waiver wires this year. It's like you could have Jerome Ford and Kyron Williams and Puka. Nico Collins and Puka and Zach Moss. It's crazy. Zach Moss, fucking Anthony Richardson, throw, throw in like Ferguson or, or Laporta and you. <laughs> You're smashing people off of waivers. All right. Well, let's jump the dynasty with Nico. Yeah. Um, let's let's see here. Um I just wanted to say a couple of weeks ago you asked me if I'd trade Keenan for Nico, and I said I, I could I could do that. And and now I don't know. Can you still do that? Wait, do I don't mean? even know if I could get 
Nico with Keenan, which Keenan did have a 40 burger yeah, two mean, weeks ago. Keenan's but. so consistent. I mean, dynasty wise, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Keenan's 31. Keenan, yeah. About damn near 32. Probably. That's, that's a tricky one. Winning, winning now, sacrificing Nico Collins as your lamb, although he's been crushing too. So, I mean, yeah, what could you do? Um, how about how about Hollywood Brown or Nico Collins dynasty? Nico, Nico, yep. Wow, I'm cool. with you. Do you, you love we love Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood's out there doing his thing with Josh Dobbs. I mean, yeah, how could we not? Yeah, but Josh Dobbs is like way better than Kyler, Kyler Murray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. All right. How about um, what, are you going? Are you going Marquise? I, I, I'm. That's that's close. It's pretty uh, close okay. for me. All right. All right. Um, how about DK or Nico? In Dynasty? Yeah. I would I would rather DK. Definitely. It's like what just like a two year age difference, so not nothing crazy. I I I guess I could still stick with DK. Uh DK's twenty six, right? I think I think he's twenty six and uh no, he's twenty five. Wow. And um it's a one year difference. Nico's twenty three. Nico's twenty four. Oh wow. Closer than I thought. Yeah, I could jump up to DK, I guess. So you'd move off for DK. How about uh, Pickens, George Pickens or Nico Collins? Give me Nico. Give me Nico, man. Pickens is just too streaky for me. I know we had like two big games this year. Um, I, I think I think he's a little overrated. I do. I think he's still a little overrated. Like I can see the upside and I know Pickett has not been ideal thus far. Um, oh, my God. Nico's just been on fire. I, give me Nico. Yeah, it's just it's 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 there hasn't been consistency of the offense and the, you see it with Pickens. It's just the and you'll see in streaks of that offense. Even last week, before right when Kenny Pickett went out, the offense looked right around the same time when they were starting to get rolling with the Raiders last week. They started to look maybe like they were going to get jump started a little bit against the Texans this week, and it, it, Pickett goes out and it doesn't really happen. Um, I think. <sighs> That's pretty tough. I guess I'll I guess I'll take I guess I'll take Nico. It's hard not to take Nico. Nico not give you what you want from Pickens, basically. Right. With, with a quarterback that looks like he's the real deal right now. Maybe a little more explosion after the catch. Yeah, Nico looks great. Like he looks like it's hard to tackle him first and yak. How about um I don't even know those Judy, I think I all day Nico, right? At this point. It could turn around for Judy, but Judy or, Judy right or Nico, Austin. Oh my God, man! This feels gross. This feels so gross. I think I'm going to go Nico. I, yeah. I I don't know what to think of Judy. Um, I I don't know if it's too early to chalk up Judy as an L. Uh, he's someone I was super high on coming into this season. I loved him in Dynasty. I loved him in Redraft, and now you know you're just a month in, you're just questioning everything. Like, is it Ross? Is it him? And then all of a sudden, like Sutton is eating. I just don't know what to think. Um, Seems like one it, of them is going to be gone here at some point. It'd probably be, be yeah. best for both of them. I hope Judy stays so that he could be at least the guy in the office that he knows with Sean Payton and moving forward. But it, he he just comes into the season banged up, and that they still right, have, that, that he still hasn't injury. quite worked back into a yeah. full, uh, you know, complement of of snaps each week. They've been kind of holding him holding him back a little bit. Um, Mims looks undeniable at some point, uh, but. Yeah, I think I gotta say Nico. How about how about Pittman or Nico? That's a good one. Oh, that's another good one. I think I think I would rather Nico. That is that is like flip a coin 50 50. Um I think I'm sticking Pitt, with Pittman there. Pittman's been see, Pittman's been better than I expected. And also Anthony Richardson's been a lot better than I expected. Yeah. Like coming from a Colts fan, I did not expect him to be nearly as efficient and um, just just have the amount of passing yards that he's had so far, man. I had uh, pretty low expectations, just at least for his rookie campaign for, yeah. you know, through the air, and uh, he's definitely exceeded them so far. I want to see Pittman get locked up and just be with Richardson for a while. I, I think I'm taking Pittman there. I just mm. yeah, it feels like Nico has a little bit of a, still a, a wide array of variants of kind of how this could go, and I just feel like. I would assume that the Colts will lock in Pittman for the contract here. They got a rookie deal on a quarterback. They can afford to pay Pittman. They know they can funnel things to him. Pittman will get better. Uh, Richardson will continue to get better. They can kind of grow together. It gives them a one 
to kind of grow with. Um, so I, I think I'll, I think I'm going Pittman here. So. Yeah, it's just hard to take the guy that just put up four and a half points versus the guy that put up 38. You know, sure. <laughs> recency bias. I how, can stick with Pittman. How about Nico against some of these rookies? How about like, would you would you take Zay Flowers? Or I would. Nico? I'd rather Nico over Zay. <laughs> I know you guys. Are, you guys were pretty. Uh, you guys were pretty high on Zay coming out, and uh, you guys definitely look pretty smart so far because he's he's been nice. I know um, you got, buddy. But yeah, no, I, I would prefer Nico. What about you guys? I'll take Flowers. I think I got to stick with Flowers. Um, how about Addison? I would. I would prefer Jordan Addison. I, I, dude, I think Jordan Addison's legit. I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Yeah, the the goose egg this week stinks. Yep. Didn't That's really cool. have a man. That the usage has been eh, but I mean. It, there's got to be regression with the touchdowns. It can't. It feels like touchdowns. locking in and saying that we'll stick with Addison for now until a couple more games from Nico, I guess. Uh, but uh, I, that'd be a hard trade for me to turn down. But, I mean, is that whatever? Would you guys trade away Nico for a first right now? I, what do you want to get out of this first? You know, this yeah, man, why did you seven right now? It doesn't feel right. Right. 18th highest scoring player in all of them. What do you want out of this first? Like, what What if Nico's legit? What if CJ Stroud is legit? Like, what if they just go on to have five, six, seven, eight very good seasons together? Like, the, yeah. there's a world where that does happen. It's you know? looking like it's, it could, it, that world exists. Um, you probably should take Nico over both those rookies, Zay and, and, and Addison. Uh, I'm taking flowers all day. That's uh, just. Let me get, let me get, I'll take flowers. He just also, again, going to seemingly locked into that number one role there with less of a, of a passing attack per se. Um, Cause uh, we were already seeing how well, you know, CJ can, can spin it and throw it and be accurate. But it just seems like Zay flowers is just locked into a really, really, really solid role for a while where again, there's a little bit of, we still got some yeah, but with who's going to be the guy in that offense. And it seems like it's Nico right now. Um, but, you know, Tank Dell's out there, you know, going to have some good games. Mechie was in the rotation a little bit here. Obviously, Bobby Woods isn't long for the operation. Uh, but uh, it seems like, you know, th- there could be a little variation there. But, man, Nico looks like everything you want. So I'll take Flowers, but I, I think I would swap Addison for or swap Nico for Addison. Right now, I'd say ah, I got to pump the brakes, but yeah, it's really hard. Not it's really hard to you know you, you got one guy who's out here producing, and it doesn't look like it's a, a fluke. Um, no, it looks almost a little easy at times for yeah. him. Like it looks like it might be easy, and they're not where they're going yet. So, I mean, unless they're there, they just made the Steelers look like idiots. Yeah, I mean, if, I don't know what happened there, but. I don't, I don't, they're, they're probably not where they're, you know, Slowick's putting together a nice rookie campaign as the OC there. Um, so. Well, them trading next year's first isn't looking so bad anymore. Because at first they were like, oh, why would they do that? They're going to be a top pick. Yeah. Like, so, anybody got anything else on, on Nico that you want to throw in there? All righty then. We will, uh, we will be right back with another episode. We got some dynasty trades uh, that we're going to go through, some dynasty trade value, some price check action. Uh, So be sure to check that out. Like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Um, We very much appreciate you guys. Be sure to hit us with five stars on the podcast if you're listening there. Um, Again, we got the Patreon. We've got a $5 holler. You can go check that out. Get a Discord. You get three extra episodes a month. Um, And obviously, we're going to do a live hang on Thursday night this week. We do some live hangs during games. Um, So lots of fun stuff going on over there. Make sure you check all that stuff out. Uh, Austin. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode, but but good to see you again here. And and one more time on the way out, the uh, the Twitter handle for everybody else. Yep, at Austin Abbott FF on all social media. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. All right, guys. We'll sit. We'll check you next time. Peace. <laughs>